Hey boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. Welcome along today to my guide on the Iron Cap. Uh, musketeers, arquebusiers, or gunners, depending on how you like to say it. Officially in game, they're the Iron Cap arquebusiers, but uh, I tend to call them muskets and gunners a lot more than I call them arquebusiers. It just sort of flows off the tongue a little bit easier. So, why uh, Iron Cap arquebusiers? Well, they're the first gunner unit that most people are going to get. And are they effective? Let me tell you off the bat that yes, they are, particularly when you put them in perspective of their leadership. Um, they do really, really good damage because they're a gun, right? The accuracy is not terrible once you get them fully upgraded, especially because most guns you're getting them in close anyway, and firing into big masses of troops is your ideal situation. And these guys really perform that really, really well, especially in the early game when you've got really quite large units of not very good infantry. And you can just sort of funnel them into a, a death trap, like a doorway or a... Or a corridor as long as you've got one of your teammates uh, in front you'll start doing some really good damage and i do recommend you try this unit if you're interested in the muskets at all anyway without further ado let's go on and look at the abilities that the iron cap uh, arquebusiers have Alrighty, so let's look at what makes the iron caps tick behind the scenes first thing i want to show you is up here and if you hit u u the u key go to unit tree second tree down here you'll find the iron cap arquebusiers they're just down below all of these ones so um, they get two little nodes one is corned gunpowder kind of like corned beef except it goes bang and uh, that increases their piercing damage by two percent of their base value now the first one only cost about 200 honor so i kind of just picked that up but they do really 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 high damage anyway being a gun and you know, it does help them if you want to fully deck this unit out. It doesn't actually cost you many honor to get all the way along the, the node there. But the one that they really, really need most of is the loading drill. It increases their rate of fire by 4% per level. So uh, currently I've got level 4, so they're getting 16% rate of fire increase. And if I wanted to spend another 3,750 honor, I would get another 4%, up to 20% rate of fire increase. Now that is absolutely fantastic. And this one here is one of the key things about Iron Cap Arquebusiers that make them really, really effective, especially for their tier, right? Especially for only 145 leadership. Let's go and have a look at their uh, veterancy lines, shall we? All right, the doctrines I've got on here, um, uh, just a, a couple of standard piercing ones, um, extra damage and extra piercing penetration, um, simply because they're cheap. I've got a lot of them, and, you know, I'm not going to spend all my great purple doctrines on a, on a green 145 leadership unit. Um, I do have a purple one on there because I have a lot of this doctrine. Like, I have so many spears of this doctrine, it's ridiculous. So they might as well have one. Um, and that increases all of their defenses by 50 and their health by 100. And that's really quite good because their health pool is not as shallow as archers. They can take a little bit of punishment, but they're not like the, you know, the Kriegs rats or the Tercios. They, they can't stand there in open fields and just take fire uh, and ignore it. They just can't. You've got to look after this unit. And an extra 310 health. Uh, mostly because I'm a longsword and I can heal, um, but also because... You know, 310 times 28 models in the unit is quite a bit of extra health, right? Uh, let's have a look at these veterancy lines. So here is the top veterancy line, and these are the stats that you get. Now, on the top line, you're going to get plus 30% firing accuracy, plus 15% armor penetration, plus 30% rate of fire, plus 6% piercing damage, plus 8% critical value, and you're also going to get four extra soldiers in the unit. And you can see the stats down the right there, that makes them pretty good. Now, all things considered, you're going to want to go the top line. I, I do not see the bottom line as viable, viable. Without the accuracy and the rate of fire boost, this unit really, really takes a hit on how much damage they can put out. They just, they don't get there. But let's look at the bottom line now, and we'll see how we get on. So, bottom line. You're going to get plus 15% accuracy, plus 6% health, plus 20% ammo capacity. An extra four soldiers in a unit. You're going to reduce the resupply cost by 20%, which is pretty rubbish because they're very cheap to resupply anyway. Unlock the sprint ability. The sprint ability for, is a little button that you press, number two, and for eight seconds you'll get 15% movement speed boost. 
Uh, it's going to increase block break, break by 80. Uh, you're going to get plus 15% damage to infantry. And you're going to get plus 15 armor penetration, plus 15% armor penetration. And again, you can see the stats on the right of the unit all the way down there. So it's really up to you which one you want to choose, but Really, I highly recommend the top line if you want to do consistent, reasonable damage. You need the accuracy, you need the rate of fire. Let's move on to our next segment. Okay, so let's go. Let's have a look at the formations available to the Iron Cap Gunners. Now, you've got to remember that, like any other ranged unit, they do a lot better with infantry in front of them. So I'm going to go and pretend to be infantry. And as you can see, they're not doing too badly at all. At this sort of range, on an unshielded unit, they tend to sort of pull them apart fairly rapidly. Apart from that one last guy. You see, the fewer and fewer of them they get, the harder and harder it is for them to, to actually hit what they're aiming at. Because they're, they're much better at firing into massed infantry. So, that's the open formation. Nothing too terrible about that especially compared to the close formation, which, to me, looks very, very similar. You may notice that yourself. Anyway, let's go pretend to be infantry again. Hello, I am a unit of shields. Some of them will always get through, I guess. Poppity, poppity, poppity. How long does it take them to kill this one? Come on, guys. Not too many left. So as you can see, when they're elited, when they're fully upgraded, there's nothing wrong with this unit's accuracy. What about if we put them in this formation here? The V formation? The wing formation, I think it's called? I quite like this formation because if you're in a hero and you start attacking along the line, you're going to be shot dead before you actually get to, the, to finish the unit, which is the, the benefit of this. You can't just jump into the middle and spin to win and kill all of them. Here we go, and I shall now pretend to be an infantry unit again. Oh no! I am being attacked by many small people. How many how many seven year olds do you think you can beat in a fight? You know, what if every fourth wave there was a twelve year old as a boss? How many could you beat? This is kinda of what this feels like. Here we go. Even with a shielded unit now, you'll see that they chip away at them rather nicely. The important thing is, of course, is that you don't let them get into your gunners. If they get into the gunners, they will kill them real nice. Taking a bit longer, of course, because a lot of the shots are going straight into the shields. Here we go. Alright, now for some, some tactics with these guys. The way that you can get your gunners to fire more quickly is to move them left and right and make use of the one key function. Let's see how that works. Fire. Fire. See how we're making them fire in volleys? We're out of ammo. <laughs> so it would seem. Alright, they can go back to the supply point, and we'll go finish the rest of these archers. That is one thing about them, they don't carry very, very large amounts of ammunition. And as long as you're beside the supply point, you're generally fine. Or even to run them backwards and forwards. They're not really any different in that respect to most other gunners. All right, let's bring them back and try and do something a little bit different with them. This time, we're going to allow them to get into combat. Let's see how this rolls. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to use this one, one key formation. Again. And what we're going to do is we're going to let them get into combat with us. Now watch how, see how my guys don't pull out their swords and, sh uh, and start stabbing? There's a very good reason for this, and that's because we're using that one key ability. If we just put them into normal attack mode, when the, the enemy get close to them, they will pull out their, their swords and start attacking instead of continuing to shoot. So that's a very important thing to know about this unit. Let's try that now. We'll move them up, and we're not going to issue them a, a fire command. We'll let them do whatever they want. Let's observe the, the unit behaviours. You see here how they pull out their little knives and they start trying to fight back in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you tell them to shoot, they'll put their knives away and they'll keep shooting. Even though they're getting hit in close combat. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's a, a primary unit behavior that you need to be aware of with the iron cap gunners. Move them slightly, use one to fire. Move them slightly, use one to fire. Much higher, much higher rate of fire and also volley. The, the weakness of this unit is the length of time they take to aim. Right? And that doesn't go away just because you, you're going one fire, one fire, one fire. Um, but, of course, once the unit gets to you, you still want to be shooting because you're going to do a lot more damage with your muskets than you are with your little daggery sword things. So, that covers all of the unit behaviours for this unit. They only have one ability, so we don't need to talk for too long about them. Let's go on to our next segment. <laughs> Alright, here we go with our first clip with the Iron Cap Gunners. With the Iron Cap Gunners, there we go. So it's always good to have the, um, the benefit of hindsight when uh, <laughs> you're talking over a clip. But um, one thing you got to remember with this unit is they're a little bit fragile. You know, they're not like the, um, the Tercios or anything like that. See how we try and snipe off the hero here? That would have killed him had he not died early. Probably waited a little bit too long. I should have taken a shot further away. So we're going up here to have a little bit of a look at what's going on. And it looks relatively safe with the huge amount of he friendly heroes we've got going on here. But that could change very quickly. So we're going to just take a moment to leave the gunners back a little bit safe. Now they're going to come up and they're going to start taking pot shots, which is exactly what you want them to do. But we do not want to get them killed by berserkers. So we just need them to move back a little bit. And now, we can tell them to fire in that direction. And look at those massive amount of numbers. Ooh, look at that. Got some of the Fortebrachio Pikes. Now, obviously, that's never going to go well if, um, if they catch you. So don't be afraid when, you, when you're using any gunners, not just the iron caps, but to move forward, to move back, to move in and out, in and out. And you don't have to take the fight just because it's on offer. See those guys coming out the gate there? I did not notice that when I was recording. And you'll see why, and what I do about it in a second. Just trying to knock down some of those shields so that uh, when the um, the iron caps shoot at them, that they're lying on the ground and are easier to kill. And again, bring them in, bring them out. See if we can snipe off the heroes. Look at that beautiful amount of damage you can do if you're being very careful with the unit. Here's that unit coming out the gate. Can we shoot some? Blam! How about a whole bunch of dead cavalry? Let's move them off the siege tower because I'm very care uh, considering that the other units may push down when I'm not watching. And it only takes a moment for this unit, a moment's inattention to lose them all. And again, we're going back up the siege tower all over again. We're going to wait till the enemy push in, and then we're just going to let them fire. There's no room to manoeuvre here to do the left and right shoot, left, right, shoot thing that will um, give them better volley fire and better shooting but as you can see they're doing just fine on their own they're protected by our Fortebrachio pikes here and there's nothing anyone can really do about it the, we're getting bombs and things chucked at us but that's just par for the course we're down now to half a unit and we're still inflicting casualties those bow heroes uh, they absolutely love to um, shoot your iron caps so be careful of those just got a little bit of a height there so that I could um, put the treb down onto the stalwarts. Oh, that's lovely. And as they come past, we're going to start shooting them in the back. So that little combo worked out really well. And now all of these stalwarts are pretty darn damaged. We just want to rescue our friend there, which is why we sort of dived into the middle of the stalwarts, and it worked, as you can see. And as you can see, he undid all our hard work. <laughs> Look at these, these, um, these guys are just sitting back here, blasting away at anyone who comes too close, and doing lots and lots of damage. Now, you might think, oh, well, it's not, not amazing damage, you know, it's not like you're getting stuck in there with, uh, I don't know, what's your favourite unit, Iron Reapers, Paladins? It's never going to be that sort of level of damage. You know, Paladins are worth nearly twice the, the leadership that the Iron Cap Gunners are worth. And, and so you've got to take these sort of things into consideration. But... You know, we were shooting stalwarts, we were shooting berserkers, we were shooting fortebrachio pikes, all sorts of very nasty things that were much, much more powerful than um, the iron cap unit itself. 
So when you've got those accuracy and damage buffs, well, you're doing just as good at that sort of range as even Tercios. And there are more of you, so you're firing more shots. Um, I just told them to move down to where I put them there, just so that they came in the front gate, rather than trying to come all the way up the siege tower, all the way along the wall, all the way down the stairs. And here they come now. So, bearing in mind that this is a very fragile unit, you know, I can't move them in here behind these shield maidens, that's just suicide. So what we can do, is just stay where we are. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to move out. If what you're looking at here, the, the circumstances and situation that you've been um, put in, uh, you, you don't have to do anything. You can just chill and wait for a better opportunity. So that's what we're doing. We're waiting for the opportunity. <clears throat> Absolutely no, no reason for me to wander into to units of archers like that, especially Nankans. It'll be the, the end of the Iron Cap Gunners for sure. Now hopefully this mall gets the memo when I come and dive in. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and get those um, those archers. Zigzagging, zigzagging so they don't hit me. And these ones seem to be unprotected, so that's just a bunch of easy kills. And after this, we're going to go across and we're going to kill the other, other unit of them. The Too easy. And we're going to bring the gunners up. And here's why. Because there are heroes here protecting all of these Namcans. And so what we need is we need some backup. Our maul is fun. He can do some backup stuff. But... You know, can he do all the damage all the time? And boom, musket volley. <laughs> you know, we'd run out of abilities. We may not have killed him without moving up the muskets. So that went really, really well. Now, the rest of this clip is pretty much them throwing their lives away for no good purpose. So um, we're not going to worry about that too much. We'll move on to a little, a couple of other little clips, some very short clips, and you can just see some of the stuff that you can do with volleys. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. Here's a clip from one of my um, quite recent videos. You can go back and watch the whole thing if you like. Um, it's called, I think, Swords and Muskets, this video. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring our Iron Cap Arcabuziers in all the way to the end point here, because this particular map gives a spot here where you can shoot relatively safely and relatively easily onto a point where the enemy is required to actually come and stand. So we see these palace guard and we think why not? We'll just put them on attack. And we manage to blow a whole lot of them away at point blank range, which is exactly what you want. Now at the moment there's still a lot of metal and wood flying around in the air over here so we want to try and just stay behind these stairs to give us a little bit of cover from the, the ranged units that are up on top. But the main objective is to get the, the gunners to be as close as we can and as safe as we can. So as soon as we've got some cover, here we go, you can see we're doing a whole bunch of damage to these Fortabrachios. You know, but not as much as we would like, so we need them closer. And that's a, kind of the motto with Iron Caps, closer, closer, closer. How close can you get without dying? Now just in case we get attacked melee, we've put them into the one ability here, and they're just going to start chewing up these units at point blank range. Look at all that damage. You know, we are going to lose a few to the uh, the odd range shot there, but that's just life. They're going to continue to blast away, just continue as the, the enemy futilely try and push onto the point here. But the main thing I want you to take away from this is that you can just get them in nice and close and just let them do their thing while you go and focus on your hero stuff. I find muskets a really good unit um, to use if you're trying to learn a new weapon because they don't need a lot of micro, they don't need a lot of focus from your from your side. You can set them up and kind of forget about them. And that's, you know, iron caps are no different. There's a, a hero kill. Next clip. Alrighty, and in this clip we're pushing up the stairs to the C point. And again, get them in nice and close while being as safe as you possibly can. You, know, you don't have you don't have to be too careful about them because they're a relatively cheap unit. But that doesn't mean just throw them away. But as you can see, at point blank range, they do an absolute ton of damage. Now, we have to clear the C point to be able to take it. So we're going to move them in nice and close to try and shoot at some of these heroes. And the best way to do that is if they're not moving. So if you stun them and knock them down, then it's just a firing squad. And it's as simple as that. The closer you are, the better you are. Be safe. 
Don't be too aggressive, but get in nice and close. So boys and girls, that's all I have to tell you today about iron cap arquebusiers slash gunners slash muskets. <laughs> Again, it's your call what you call them. Everybody will understand what you're talking about. So do I find them an effective unit? Yes, I do. Do I recommend them? Yes, I do. And not just for, for new players, but also for you veterans. If you haven't really played around with this unit before, for 145 leadership, you're going to be surprised. It'll shoot down heroes pretty nice, and it shoots well into big blobs. Um, don't forget as well, if uh, you are playing on the My Game servers, please use my code down the bottom of the screen here. You can get these fancy little uh, attires and things like that, as well as boosts of bronze and gold and all that sort of uh, good stuff, silver, that you need to use in the game. And there's some great starter packs there too, if you are new to the game. Uh, I hope you learned something new, or you just enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming to my channel.